Hi everyone, my name is Nate, and I'm an engineer on the Android Permissions team. I'm here with Terrence from the Developer Relations team, and we're going to be walking you through some of the best practices for Android permissions. Over the past several years, Android has continued to focus on privacy. Privacy is a major concern for users, and Android has been continually releasing tools to help users and developers better control how user data is consumed and shared. To enhance user privacy, Android has added the notification permission to give users more control over the notifications that they see, the coarse and fine location permission split, allowing users to provide apps their approximate location without giving their exact moment-to-moment -moment location, and developer downgradable permissions, which allow apps to revoke permissions that they need only for a short time. To downgrade permissions, call the revoke self permission on kill API that's available for apps targeting SDK 33 and above. In this talk, we'll be going over several best practices for using permissions in your app and giving examples of how Google Apps apply them. These best practices help users understand why your app needs their permission, and research has shown that users who understand an app's permission requests are significantly more likely to grant that request. Reducing the denial rate by using best practices isn't just user-friendly, it sets your app above those that don't. I'm going to highlight three best practices that you as developers can use to both increase user transparency and increase user acceptance of your permission request. These are choosing the right context to show permission requests, gracefully handling permission denials, and reducing permission usage where possible. The single most important thing apps can do to increase permission grant rates is to show permissions in context. Permission requests should be made at the point where users activate the feature of your app which requires that permission. Our research shows that users are two times more likely to deny unexpected runtime permissions compared to requests that they expect. So it is critical that at the point of request, the user understands what feature will be using their data and how that data will be used by your app. Let's look at an example. Here we have an app which allows the user to create notes. They have the option to take and attach a photo and a location to these notes. The first version of the app requests camera and location permissions at startup. This is a jarring experience for the user who very likely may not understand why a note-taking app would need these permissions. Now let's contrast this with the second app. This app has the same functionality, but it requests permissions in context. The app waits to request camera access until the user clicks the camera button and waits to request location permission until the user clicks on the location button. This makes it much easier for users to understand what each permission will be used for. Now, sometimes it may be necessary to inform the user explicitly about how your app uses permissions. To facilitate this, the Android platform provides the should show request permission rationale API within Activity Compat. If this method returns true, it's recommended to display additional information about why the permission is required before showing a permission request again. This is especially critical if your permission usage may not be immediately apparent to the user. When users deny permissions or grant less precise permissions, it is critical that your app gracefully degrade its experience. Unless your app is completely unable to function without a particular permission, it creates a very frustrating user experience if some functionality in your app is locked off behind a permission grant that the user sees as unnecessary. Therefore, your app should continue to function as best it can in the case that permissions are denied. For example, if the user does not grant location permission, Google Maps still allows the user to pan around the map, view information about individual locations, and manually navigate by specifying a start and an endpoint. Great way to avoid user denial of permission requests is to use less precise permissions or reduce usage of permissions altogether. This communicates to users that their privacy is being respected. For example, many location use cases do not require precise location access. And that's why we encourage you to only request course location unless the current feature that the user is actively engaging with requires precise location. Another way that apps can reduce usage of permissions is by choosing permissionless alternatives, like the action image capture intent to leverage the system camera app instead of requesting camera permissions. 
Apps can also now use the new Revoke Own Permission on Kill APIs mentioned earlier if they no longer require permission. For example, when using permission-protected data exclusively during the onboarding of a user. Now, it can sometimes be difficult to determine exactly where private data is accessed, especially in larger apps or apps that include bundled SDKs or other libraries, which may use permissions in a ways that aren't immediately apparent. Android has introduced data access audit APIs in order to help apps detect which sections of their code caused a private data access and reduce these accesses where possible. Apps targeting Android 11 and higher can leverage these APIs by creating an on-op noted callback object and registering it with the App Ops Manager. After implementing this, your app will be notified about both synchronous, for example, microphone access, and asynchronous, for example, location, usages of permission-protected resources. Together, these best practices can dramatically reduce user denial of permission requests and increase user trusts in your app. And I'm going to hand it over to Terrence, who will be discussing some examples of these best practices in action. Thanks, Nate. Now, the following examples show how Google's apps follow permission best practices. Hopefully, they will help inspire you in your feature planning and development processes to prioritize users' privacy. Let's begin with Gmail, which relies on notifications to alert users of new emails or messages. As a result, the Gmail team has carefully designed its notification permission workflow, including how and when to request a permission to optimize acceptance rates and user experience. Let's explore this together. First, let's cover the timing of permission requests. Earlier, we mentioned that apps should provide situational context for their permission requests, which means to prompt users when they are already ready to grant. In Gmail's case, they wait until the user completes the ad account phase of the onboarding flow and lands in the inbox screen before requesting the notification permission. It doesn't make sense for the app to prompt for notifications before the user signs in. However, when the user sees a list of their emails in the main screen of the app, they're much more likely to understand why the app would like to send them notifications. Next, I know what you're all thinking. What if the user denies the notification permission anyways? Well, in that case, Gmail seeks to minimize the effect of that denial on user functionality and doesn't repeatedly show disruptive in-app dialogues to convince users to change their decision. Instead, Gmail allows these users to continue using other aspects of the app as normal, such as reading and responding to emails. However, this doesn't mean that Gmail gives up on notifying these users altogether, as often users may have accidentally denied the permission and are now wondering why they aren't receiving notifications for new emails. For those users, the app provides a robust troubleshooting path to re-enable the notification permission in the app settings page and when users attempt to change individual notification settings. Since it's likely users who are troubleshooting why they aren't receiving notifications will visit Gmail settings page, Gmail has embedded several notices there. These notices alert users that notifications are currently disabled for the app and provide them with the link to easily re-grant the permission in system settings. Similarly, if users try to modify the notification settings for emails or chat messages with notifications disabled, they get a prompt with the same information and settings link. As we can see, Gmail seeks to provide a great user experience to users who knowingly opted out of receiving notifications from the app while still providing a robust path for users to resume receiving notifications if they choose. Let's pivot a little and explore how Google Maps, an app that is closely associated with location, works hard to deliver a great experience when requesting permissions. First, Maps requests permissions in context as the user tries to navigate to a particular place, since this is when they're likely to understand how they will benefit from granting location access to the app. Another way users can provide or upgrade Maps location access voluntarily is by tapping the current location button in the bottom right corner. This signals to Maps that the user is likely ready to grant upgraded access so the app can locate them. However, even if Maps follows all the permission best practices, there will always be certain users who might prefer to share only approximate location or no location information at all. For users who don't grant 
any location permissions, Maps will start by showing a broad view of the world the first time the app is launched. From there, users can pan around the map or zoom into particular areas of interest, and they can click on particular locations or shops to see more details like reviews and images. If users search for a particular keyword, they will still get results that are relevant to the area of the map that they're currently viewing. To provide navigation capabilities without location permissions, Maps allows users to type in the origin and destination addresses. Users will still be able to find a route between the two points and can view a list of navigation directions. Here, for example, you can see a route between one of Google's San Francisco offices and my home. Oh, where's home for me, you ask? The Android Statues Garden in Mountain View, of course. I mean, where else would it be? Some users may decide to grant Maps access to only their approximate location which provides an estimate of their location within a three kilometer radius. In this case, Maps uses that estimate to provide a better user experience. This is evident as soon as the user launches the app. Maps centers the estimate of their location instead of a broader view. When the user searches for something, such as shopping, Maps uses estimates of the user's location to provide more relevant results. That's not all. When the user clicks on a location of interest, Maps can provide an estimate of how far away that place is from them so they can plan their trips accordingly. Now, let's take a moment to summarize everything that we've discussed today. Here are the main takeaways for developers. Protecting user privacy is a top priority for Android and our ecosystem, and permissions are an important way we help users stay in control over their data. We rely on you, the developer, to protect the privacy of your users and improve their experience with your apps by adopting our best practices for permission. These are increasing situational context of permission requests, properly handling reduced data access, including from permission denials, and lastly, requesting only the permissions that your app really requires. We hope that Gmail's handling of the notification permission and Google Maps handling of location permissions will help serve that purpose. If you'd like to learn more about specific permissions and features that we've discussed in this talk, such as location accuracy or data access audit APIs, please check out our revamped landing page for all privacy topics in Android at d.android.com slash design for safety. Also, check out the Everything to Know About Storage ADS talk if you want to learn more about how to handle app storage in a way that respects the user's privacy. Hope to see everyone there. Thank you so much for listening.